Hey everyone, welcome to Webby on Cars. Uh, today's video, we are gonna be having a look at the 2022 Hyundai i30 Sedan N. This is the last of the N models I've managed to drive. Over the last year or so, I've driven the i30 N hatch in both manual and DCT, the i20 N, the Kona N, um, and today we're looking at the i30 Sedan N, and this one has got the six speed manual gearbox. I'm gonna show you around the car, we'll talk about obviously the inside, the outside, the spec of the car, the performance figures, um, but we'll also take it for a drive just to see how it is uh, on the open road. It'll be interesting to compare this one to its brother, the i30 hatch, uh, in the end specification, um, because they've got the same engine, same gearbox, but underneath they're quite different because they're a very different car. So let's get started having a look around the i30 sedan N and find out what it's all about. Hello everybody, welcome to Webby on Cars. Today's video is the Hyundai i30 Sedan N, or the Elantra N, depending where in the world you're watching this video. Now, over the last year or so, I've been really lucky to drive all of the N models from Hyundai. The i20, the Kona, the i30 with the manual and the dual clutch transmission. So this is the last one I've managed to get my hands on. This particular car's got the six-speed manual gearbox, but it's also available with the eight-speed dual clutch transmission for the same price at just over $56,000. Now, as I'm filming this, today they've actually announced there's gonna be some price increases uh, on a lot of the i30 models. So I believe this is going up by around $1,200. So we could be looking around $57,500 uh, for a car of this specification. Um, this one's got the metallic paint and also the optional factory sunroof. So yeah, for $57,500, still seems a pretty good value for money. Anyway, in today's video, we're gonna have a look around the car. We're gonna take it for a drive and then I'll give you my thoughts and opinions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy yourself. If you do like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell, and then you'll find out every time a new car review goes live. So anyway, let's get on to this i30 Sedan N and see what it's all about. Now there's lots to talk about with this i30 Sedan N. So let's start at the front and talk about the power plant that's under the bonnet. We've got the same two litre turbocharged petrol engine that we find in the uh, i30 N hatch. So that's 206 kilowatt and 392 new meters of torque. Uh, as I said a moment ago, this one's got the six speed manual, but you can also get the eight speed dual clutch transmission. Power goes through the front wheels. There's no all wheel drive or rear wheel drive option, uh, but it's also got a limited slip differential to help keep that power in check. Styling on the sedan is quite different to the hatch. It's based on a completely different car. We used to get the Elantra here in Australia and it's called the Elantra in other countries but Hyundai have chosen to call it the i30 sedan, so it's part of the i30 family, because then you've got the N-Line and the premium, and you've got the active, and then you've got this N model as well. And those names are in the keeping with the hatchback, so they've done it to make it seem like one family, basically, even though this is a different car with a big platform and chassis and everything else. But it's still an i30, and we'll treat it as one. Um, as I said, styling is very, very different at the front to the hatchback. Uh, we've still got the LED headlights with the uh, LED daytime running lamps. But we've got this fantastic sort of body kit around the front and around the sides of the car as well. So it's much more aggressive than the N9 Premium which sits below in the range. Um, you can definitely tell this is, like I say, the N model and so of their body kit. We've got the 19 inch wheels, the massive spoiler on the back of the car. Now, as well as having the engine with all that power, you also need decent brakes and thankfully, Hyundai have given us 360 millimeter brakes at the front of this car, as well as putting some fantastic tires on it. You've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's as standard on this car, uh, so some serious tires. The good thing about the i30 sedan, and in fact all i30 N models, is the five year warranty that Hyundai give you with the car actually covers you for track use as well. So they're kind of encouraging you to take the car to the track. So the fact they've put really nice sticky tires on and big brakes on this car as standard, is kind of encouraging you to say, yeah, go and have a track day. Make sure you get track cover insurance though, because otherwise if things go wrong, yeah, you've got a very expensive bill on your hands. Then looking at the i30 sedan in as a side profile, again, you can see it's much different to the hatch. It's actually 33 centimeters longer than the hatchback. So it is quite a long car and it sits fairly low as well. These trim bits down the bottom here, you'd normally see these in red on most other models, but when you have the red color car, you don't get the red color accents because obviously it would clash a little bit. 
So they're in grey, so they would normally be in red on all the other colours of the car. Uh, gloss black mirrors. This car's got the optional factory fitted sunroof, which is $2,000. Um, I would definitely have that if I was going to buy one of these. But the other thing you notice on the side of the car, you've got all these sort of angles and creases coming down from the door here. And it gives it a really sort of interesting shape from the side of the car. It's not just sort of one sort of flat surface, if you like. It makes the car look really interesting. Coming around to the back of the car, we've got the twin tail pumps that we get on the i30 uh, N hatch. We've got a little rear spoiler here on the, uh, on the top of the boot lid, which is really nice. LED tail lights. And then this LED light bar that goes all the way from one side of the car to the other, which at night time looks absolutely fantastic. Inside the boot, we've got the little button there just to open up there. 464 litres of carrying capacity. So it's a really decent sized boot. You can fold the rear seats down, but the only downside is you've got this strut brace in the back of the car, which obviously helps with sort of the stiffness of the chassis. So if you're on a racetrack or going for a spirited drive around some twisty roads is great. But if you're trying to put something long from the boot into the back of the car because you're trying to get something home from Bunnings or something, um, that's not so great because that red strut brace gets in the way. You can poke things through it, but if you've got something bigger, yeah, it's not really very helpful. But how often are you going to be doing that? Not very often, I don't suspect. So in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not too much of an issue. Safety equipment is really well catered for in this i30 sedan end as well. You've got the typical autonomous braking, you've got blind spot monitor, lane keeping aid, front and rear sensors, rear cameras. The only sort of real omission is adaptive cruise control. And that's the same whether you have the manual or the automatic, it doesn't matter. And it's the same as the hatchback as well. It's a real shame because this bigger i30 sedan N really works well as a do everything car. It can be great as a long distance cruiser, but you can also use it to have a bit of fun either on a racetrack or around some twisty roads. But when you're doing those long journeys, the adaptive cruise control would be a nice addition to have um, to sort of with that stop start traffic. But that's only a real downside for me because everything else about this car, I think is absolutely fantastic. Now in terms of running costs, you can actually prepay for your servicing over three, four or five years when you buy your car. So it saves you for any, any potential price increases for your servicing costs. So once you've paid for it, that covers you for your next three, four or five years. Servicing is every 12 months or 10,000 kilometers. So it's a little bit more regular than your standard i30s. But with that high performance engine and gearbox, then you know, it's kind of understandable. In terms of fuel costs, there's a fairly small 47 litre fuel tank on this car. And average fuel consumption is rated at 8.2 litres per 100. So depending on how you drive, you're gonna get probably somewhere between five and 550 k's to a tank of fuel, um, which isn't necessarily too bad. Apart from the fact that fuel is ridiculously expensive at the minute, but then it doesn't matter what you drive, it's going to be expensive either way. Now in the week I've been driving this car, I've done lots of different driving. So I've been to and from work, I've done some freeway, I've had a bit of fun around some twisties, especially when I've been filming today. And I've actually managed to average eight litres per hundred. So it's marginally under the 8.2 that Hyundai claim this car can do, which is actually quite surprising because this is the sort of car that begs to be driven hard. So the fact you're getting pretty much exactly what the manufacturer says is great. You know, you're not gonna sort of think 8.2 or yeah, I'm probably gonna get 10 litres per 100. You're getting pretty much what Hyundai say on the tin. So thanks Hyundai for actually being accurate with the fuel figures. Right, so let's have a look inside this i30 sedan in. So we start off obviously with things like keyless entry. Uh, as we get inside, let's start with the door first of all. Uh, we've got an eight speaker Bose branded sound system, which does sound absolutely fantastic. Um, up here, we've got the memory zip positions for the electric seats. Uh, so let's move on to that next. These sports seats are absolutely superb. Got loads of bolster in. They're perforated because uh, the seats are actually uh, heated and ventilated in the front. Uh, we've then got all the electric switches down here, including the electric lumbar support, which is fantastic to see. Uh, I do like all this blue stitching around the seats as well. That's quite cool. Uh, and then you've got the end logo there in the seat. It's not illuminated like it is in the hatchback, but it still looks quite cool nonetheless. Uh, as I say, that's the optional uh, sunroof that you can get when you order one of these cars. Uh, the general layout of the dash, as you can see, is actually really, really nice. So let's jump in and have a look at some of the controls in there. 
So, starting with the steering wheel, it's exactly the same unit as we get in the i30N hatchback, of course. Uh, so we've got buttons here for things like your telephone, uh, you've got your cruise control and safety systems over that side. We've got the two blue N buttons there, uh, just below that. Uh, the left one will do custom one setting. The button on the right will put it into N mode or custom two. I'll come onto those uh, settings in a minute when we go through the uh, infotainment screen. And because this is the manual car, this has got the button where you can turn on and off the rev matching feature. If this was the automatic, it would be the button for the end grin shift mode, uh, which we don't get on the manual gearbox. So then from the steering wheel, just in front of the driver, you've got a 10.25 inch digital display. Got all your sort of normal readout features there, so your rev counter, your speedo, uh, and then in front of you, you've got things like your trip computer. The central bit is configurable with the buttons on the steering wheel, so you can decide what features you want to see. And if you press the N button on the steering wheel, that's a cool graphic, isn't it? I love the way the ring of fire goes around the central rev counter. And then the central rev counter dominates the display. So when you're on some spirited driving, you can obviously um, see how many revs you're doing and you know get your gear changes just spot on. The other nice thing about it being in the N mode is it shows you the oil and engine temperature gauges. So if you are gonna go for a bit of a drive, it helps you um, make sure you've got the engine in the oil up to temperature so you don't do any damage to the engine, which is really, really important. Um, also down the bottom, you can see engine, steering, and suspension. The three bars that are red show you what level you're at in terms of you know, how hard they are or how much power you've got from the engine. Uh, that's something you can customize on the infotainment display, and then you get your customized buttons that I mentioned earlier on the steering wheel. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Then, we come over to that infotainment display. So it's pretty standard stuff. It's what you'd find in a lot of Hyundai products these days. Uh, so be it an i30, a Kona, um, a Tucson, a Palisade, uh, a lot of them get this 10.25 inch display. Uh, it's really nice and clear. Uh, it's very, very easy to use. And this N mode button over here is obviously unique to M models. Um, so this is where it allows you to set up certain things uh, if we swipe across, this is the custom mode settings that I was mentioning <clears throat> just a minute ago, excuse me. Um, so when you use the custom buttons on the steering wheel, this is what they're relating to. So custom two is on the right hand side of the steering wheel with the end button. So you press the end button twice to get to this custom two setting. So here you can change all these different features about the car. So you can have your own preferences rather than the specific ones that Hyundai choose for you. So this system comes with built-in satellite navigation, you've got digital radio, uh, but you've also got obviously Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although you do need a cable to plug them in, it's not wireless. Moving down slightly, so just below that, it's nice to see we've actually got some physical buttons here for some of the main functions of that infotainment screen, including the volume button as well. Uh, so it makes it much easier to use, not like the screen in something like a Golf GTI. Just to the right of that, you can see you've got the stop-start button there as well for the engine. Uh, just below that, we've got the climate control buttons. Uh, it's currently switched off, so let's just bring that into life. Um, so it's dead easy to use. Um, your temperature's both sides. It's automatic, so it just does everything for you. Um, you can adjust your fan speed manually, obviously, and where you want the airflow to go. Um, so it's pretty standard stuff. Just below that, um, we've got heated and ventilated seats on the passenger and also the driver side, obviously and also a heated steering wheel. Uh, that's actually quite a nice feature when you have the cold mornings uh, in the winter like we've had recently. Coming just below that, we can see our charging options here. Uh, so the USB um, connection to the left is purely just for charging your phone. If you want to use the CarPlay or the Android Auto, you do have to use this middle one because that one doesn't do it. We've then got a 12 volt, 180 watt kind of cigarette style adapter there. Uh, and then down here, we've got a wireless charging mat for your mobile phone. Uh, this car, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is the six-speed manual gearbox, um, or you can have, obviously, the eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. Just in front of that, we've got a couple of buttons here. Oh, the light's not coming. There we go. This one is the drive mode, so that switches between normal, eco, and sport. Button there to turn on and off your cameras and then another one there to turn on and off your parking sensors. 
We've also got a manual handbrake, um, which is unlike if you had, say, an inline premium that's got a electronic handbrake. And then we've got a bit of storage under here. Uh, you've then got another USB under there. Um, fairly decent amount of storage, which is quite nice. It's not too deep, but it's certainly enough to put most stuff in. So as you look around, the cabin is quite different to that in the i30 and the hatchback. Um, it definitely feels a little bit more sort of premium in here and a bit upmarket. Um, the cabin in the hatch feels a little bit bland and basic, if I'm honest, uh, whereas this one does feel a bit nicer. There are obviously still some sort of cheaper plastics, particularly on the top of the doors and things like that. Um, but in general, it's a nice place to be. Uh, I think it's a really nice cabin, particularly uh, for the sort of money that Hyundai are charging you. Now, room in the back of the i30 sedan is much bigger than the i30 hatch. Um, because of that longer chassis, you get heaps of legroom behind the driver. Um, I've got the seat in my driving position, uh, so there's absolutely acres behind here. I can just about get my feet under the driver's seat, so on a longer journey, you can stretch your legs out a bit. Um, as you saw when I got in the car, the door actually opens nice and wide, so getting in and out is quite easy. You've just got to be careful you don't hit your head uh, on the door frame as you get in. Uh, we have got a couple of air vents in the back here, uh, just down the centre console. There's no power switches down here, unfortunately, no USBs or um, 12 volt sockets, which is a bit of a shame because you're bound to have kids here in the back and kids are bound to have a phone or an iPad or something that needs charging. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment not to see any charging points down there. It's also disappointing that you don't get a centre armrest with cup holders. Um, most cars that I've driven have a centre armrest with cup holders, which is great for people in the back, um, particularly for kids, you don't want them to argue and do whatever, but it's good they've got somewhere to put their drinks. There is a little door bin just down here in each door, but it's not particularly big. Um, so you'd probably end up just chucking stuff on the floor and it'd be rolling around and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's a real shame they haven't put this armrest in with the cup holders. Um, yeah, don't know what they were thinking with that. Um, you do get the ISOFIX child seat fixings uh, for, the, for the baby seats in the back though, for the outer two seats, um, which is sort of fairly standard stuff. The actual view out, the, the, uh, the car isn't too bad here as well. The windows are fairly small, but the visibility is actually quite good. You also get a decent view out the front as well. Um, so people in the back will have, you know, they won't feel sort of claustrophobic. It does help having the sunroof actually. If you didn't have the sunroof, it would feel quite dark in the back here. Um, so even though the sunroof is towards the front of the car, it does let some light in um, to stop it feeling too claustrophobic, particularly in the back. Um, but overall, you know, it's a nice place to be. There's just a couple of things that I wish Hyundai would put in here to make it even better. So now we've been around the outside of the car and had a look on the inside. The most important bit about this car is actually how it drives. Because we need to see, is it as good as the i30 hatch? Um, I suspect it will be, and having driven it for the last week, I can tell you that it is. But, I need to give you a demonstration to show you how good it is. So into end mode and off we go. Now in end mode, the steering actually gains quite a lot of weight. So when you're sort of going fairly quickly around a track or a twisty road, your steering's nice and heavy. But when you're at low speed, so if you're parking the car or doing a UE or something, the steering goes a lot lighter, which is actually quite handy. Because when you're trying to do a U-turn or park your car, if the steering is really heavy, it makes it quite difficult. So the first thing you notice when you start driving the sedan version of the i30N, it's because of that longer chassis that this car's got, it feels a lot more stable than the hatch but also the ride's not as uncomfortable as well. So even in this hardy setting on the suspension, it's actually still fairly bearable. I mean, it's given the stabilization feature on my GoPro a bit of a workout, but even so, inside you don't feel too many bumps and lumps coming through the cabin. If 
you put it in the comfort mode, it's like driving a limousine almost, it's that comfortable. Um, yeah, you can definitely tell the difference between the sedan and the hatch. One of the nice things when you do put it in the end mode is on the left hand side of the driver's instrument cluster, it actually shows you your engine temperature and oil temperature. So if you are going to be using it on track or going for a spiritual drive, it's good to see that you can wait until obviously the oil is up to temperature before you start ringing the engine's life. I would imagine most people would choose the automatic, the H-Speed DCT in this car. Because that's the way everybody goes now, isn't it? Everybody wants the faster gear changes, the cracks and popples that you get when you change your gear. But this six-speed manual is actually really easy to drive. Um, and when you use the rev matching feature, you get just as much satisfaction from the sound of the engine, the pops and bangs from the exhaust. And it gathers speed really quickly. You don't get the same sensation of speed when you're driving the sedan as you do in the hatch. Maybe because it's got that longer chassis and it rides a bit better and you've got more sound insulation because, you know, the boot's not open. Um, but yeah, you, it's only when you look down at the speedo and realise how fast you're going that you sort of, yeah, you get an understanding of what's going on. Because in the hatch, the hatch feels a bit more nimble but you definitely feel the, the more, you know, the ride is more uncomfortable and you get the sensation of speed more in the hatch. So yeah, the sedan does feel a bit more sort of grown up, I suppose you'd call it. Geez, when the engine gets above 3,000, 4,000 revs, it really picks up quite quickly. Um, you, yeah, you have to watch your speed because you could be the wrong side of the speed limit fairly quickly. But um, yeah, yes, you just have to enjoy your speed at low speeds if that makes sense. Probably doesn't. But if you live near a racetrack, or you just happen to live somewhere where there's lots of twisty roads, this car is an absolute blast. definitely feel the benefit of that weightier steering in end mode because yeah it, it gives you much more feel and confidence when you're sort of driving quickly around a corner because if it was too light you'd just feel a little bit yeah you, you just wouldn't know what the front wheels are doing I really like the rev matching feature as well it makes you like feel like you're a bit of a hero um, some sort of rally driver or something like that when it blips the throttle and every time you change down the gear. It's a great feature to have. Now, as opposed to the end mode, I tend to find myself putting the car in one of the custom modes because then I can change the settings to my preferences. So I actually tend to dial back the steering a little bit so it's slightly softer and also the same for the suspension as well because some of the roads here in Melbourne can be a little bit uneven and bumpy. Um, and yeah, just a, a little bit uncomfortable. I know there's plenty of people out there that have tuned these things and got more power out of them, but I really don't think you need to. 206 kilowatt is more than enough for a small car like this. And interestingly, this sedan model actually weighs less than the equivalent hatch. I think it's something like 50 or 60 kilos lighter, which is strange really, being the fact that it's a bigger car. So you get a, yeah, so you don't get the sensation of speed, but it's lighter. Another interesting fact I found out, I was doing a bit of research on the car sales app uh, on my phone. According to them, if you live in the ACT, 
Western Australia, Northern Territory or Tasmania, and you're on your P plates, you can drive one of these. All the other states you can't, so like here in Victoria, you can't drive one of these on your P plates. But that just seems crazy. So someone who's 18 has just passed their driving test can drive one of these with 206 kilowatt. I mean, an 18 year old has got $56,000 to buy a new car, which I don't know how many of them would be around unless they work very hard or they got very generous parents. As well as having these super grippy Michelin tyres, it's also handy to know that you've got 360mm brakes on the front wheels. Because you can get a speed pretty quick in this car. That's also good to know. You can slow it down pretty quick if you get it a bit wrong. So that brings us to an end to this video for the Hyundai i30 sedan N. Uh, I have to say I've absolutely loved my week with this car, it's been fantastic. Uh, a great daily driver, but then a car that you can go out on the weekend and have a bit of fun with uh, while kiting all the family around. You just can't beat it. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the no notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. As ever, if you've got any questions about this car or any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below for me and I'll answer any questions as soon as I can. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.